What's good, everybody? Welcome to The Doe Show. Happy Friday. Hope you're having a good day. I hope everything is good with you. Uh, we will talk about the stock market later. Today, we're going to wrap up our uh, active trading week by uh, just sharing a few stories with you. So I'm sure not a lot of people are interested in this, but uh, I'm going to share just a couple stories and uh, about active trading, things I've come across, uh, success stories, maybe a mystery in there, uh, and then we'll uh, wrap it up and, and uh, call it a Friday. So normally uh, Fridays are lighter videos. Now this week we talked about trading plans on Monday. We talked about using leverage on Tuesday. We did product. Um, uh, we did products on uh, Tuesday using leverage on Wednesday. Tracking your performance yesterday and today I'm just going to share some stories with you. Now we are not active traders here at Jazz Wealth. I promised I would say that every. Um, day <laughs> so people get the idea we're long-term investors retirement investors I just happen to have a background in trading that's how I got into being an advisor I'm the one of the advisors that actually does the work right so a lot of financial advisors they buy you a mutual fund and they try to cheer you up and keep you going through the rough times my job is to actually invest your money for you our portfolios are built and managed by us on our website and uh, so my background is trading. You get a guy that actually knows a ton about the markets, which I think you see on the closing beat, or at least I try to share as much as I can. So again, we're not long-term investors. We just thought we'd spend some time for the active trader and uh, maybe teach them a thing or two. And I hope you learned something this week. Well, anyways, uh, I'm gonna share a few stories with you and then I will get out of your way. I promise if you have any questions, let me know. Please hit the subscribe button. Even if you don't like us, hit the subscribe button. Turn the bell off. I don't care if you turn it on. Uh, we're doing some discussions next or next year uh, conferences. I'm going to be speaking in front of a ton of different people, and I want to share the stats about what uh, people that care about their investments do. So I'm going to keep bugging you. I'm sorry. Um, anyways, let me share a story with you. So uh, first story, a uh, long time ago, I actually, and I've mentioned this many times, I used to teach people uh, all over the world how to invest in the U.S. markets. Now, it wasn't just like a book and I would just read from a book. It was learn by doing. And so what we would do is, whether it was in person or online, um, I would sort of set up my whole thing. I took everything I had. I would go places, set it up and go, hey, we're going to trade now today. Today is for the day traders. And so we would you know, do everything. Markets open. I would actually trade right in front of everybody, buying and selling throughout the day, teaching everybody how it works. Well, one of the people that I ran across and, and became a great friend of mine actually um, over the years, he was uh, in Florida. And so at the time I was in South Florida and uh, I, we kind of just got to know each other over the years and uh, I taught him how to trade. My claim to fame is like I taught this guy what to do and check this out. What we used to teach is that once you know everything, like once you know how to place the orders, how to find everything, how the platform works, how the stock market works, well then you're going to go start trading. And what we used to do is we used to tell people just trade, trade for free, go ahead, buy and sell as much as you want. We want you to get used to it. And so we told people, trade everything. Trade stocks less than $10, over $50, low volume stocks, IPOs, penny stocks, tech stocks, retail stocks. We told them just go to town and trade everything because what's gonna happen, and still to this day happens, you guys know it if you, if you do any kind of uh, trading, you find stocks that you like, you find products you like, positions you like, and the way you like to trade them. And so what happened is this guy said, I don't like penny stocks, man. I can't do it. I don't get them. They, don't, they move too slow for me. I'm just not that interested. He said, I don't like stocks under $10. They do nothing for me. I've traded them all. I've traded all the penny stocks. I don't really care for them. He said, I don't like the low volume stocks because this guy envisioned himself being a large trader one day. He actually posted pictures on the wall. The story I shared with you the other day, that's where I got that from, was from this guy. He envisioned himself to be a large trader and he said, I'm going to trade a lot of volume one day. And so therefore I can't trade the low volume stocks. If a stock only trades 20,000 shares a day, that's not gonna cut it. I hope to trade that in a minute. That's what he said. So he said, nope, that's not gonna work for me. He tried trading IPOs and he goes, Dustin, that's not gonna work for me either. Uh, this was over a long period of time. But he said, that's not gonna work for me either because I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't have any history. All I see is things wiggling around. I can't use a chart. I'm just buying and selling and he can't short. He wanted to be able to short stocks. So then he went and traded retail stocks. At some point he had traded retail stocks and uh, he just didn't like it. He traded the targets, he traded the Walmarts of the world. And he's like, I, just, I don't feel it, right? It's not there, I'm not good at it. He noticed by tracking his stats and having a trading plan that uh, it just wasn't working out for him. So he never traded retail stocks. He went on to trade tech stocks and that was too scary for him. And it was also too expensive at the time. So tech stocks 
Uh, you had Apple going crazy, of course you had Amazon and everything, uh, but he uh, didn't like it because they were too volatile. So on one hand, he went and traded things that were too slow and sleepy. On the other hand, he went and traded things that were too fast and crazy. He traded stocks that didn't have any volume and he tested out some different sectors to figure out what he did and didn't like. Ultimately, what he figured out was that he liked stocks that were over $50, that had high volume, meaning a lot of shares traded every day in the defense sector. And that was really unique at the time because nobody, not one of our people that we taught was going to the defense sector. And he actually narrowed it down to one stock. And to this day, he only trades one stock. I shared it with you the other day. It's UTX. He is one third of the daily trading volume on UTX. One guy sits in his house, you'd never guess it, wears like, bare, he doesn't, like he goes bare feet to Circle K across the street by the beach uh, to get a drink or something. You'd never guess that this was this guy. So he trades UTX every day. If you ever notice, and if let's say the markets are just normal, everything's good, and you look at UTX and the volume is this, this, right? And it's just a normal week, and then all of a sudden you see that, that's because he took the day off. I, I, I promise you, it's like, it, that's how it works. When he takes the day off, that stock trades lower volume. He's so big on this one stock, he actually had to register with the SEC as what's known as a large trader. There's a special code that goes next to his name when he trades so that everybody, uh, the SEC knows it's him. Now he doesn't do anything wrong, of course, you know. It's just a way for the SEC to say, oh no, that's him, everybody else is over here. And so I thought that was pretty cool after teaching somebody, they grew to a point many, 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 many more millions of dollars that he manages uh, than I'll ever imagine of. And he does that, right? And it's just one guy. You picture like a building of people all clicking away and stuff. One dude barely gets dressed every morning and just sits there. And he's got a chair, by the way. He lives on a beach over on the, uh, on the east coast of Florida. He's got a chair that uh, when, it, like, it's, it's a normal looking chair, but it's a little button on it and he can steer the chair. So he like backs up and he'll go all the way over to the kitchen and stuff. He's a physically fit guy, he's into that, but uh, I just thought it was cool, a cool little toy. Um, so anyways, what are the pros and cons of that, by the way, if you care and are still paying attention? Uh, the pros are, he tested everything. He traded, he dipped his toe in futures and Forex and different stocks and different products. And he found, ultimately, he funneled it down to one stock. Now, I wouldn't suggest that for most people, of course, because you, you don't want one, you don't want, it's gonna take forever to find one stock, but he had a damn good trading plan. He tested his performance across the board and he really put himself into it all that time like a, like a hold up little guy in a house and then eventually figured out that's where he was most successful. And he is very successful doing this one stock. So the advantage is, he pretty much knows what this company does inside and out. He studies it, he lives by one of their uh, locations over there on the east coast of Florida. He follows the fundamentals. He obviously knows how the stock trades. He knows when things are a little crazy and when they're a little bit uh, weaker. And he's always buying and selling all day long. He's a buyer and a seller on this stock. So the advantages, of course, those are pretty good advantages. The disadvantages are he's sort of playing with fire. It's one stock. It's a massive company, but what happens if that stock doesn't, what if it changes its mood or the company turns out to be like GE and they gotta start splitting off some of their products and stuff. So he's got some, he's got some downsides there too, but uh, for the last 10 plus years, uh, it's been nothing but upside. And so that is story number one uh, for me. Uh, now, here's a story about me actually real quick. Have you ever heard of something called uh, parabolic? or climactic, right? So when a stock goes parabolic or climactic, that's when it's just trading along, everything's going just fine, and for whatever reason, it falls off a cliff. It falls, it's a parabolic decline or rally. Whereas normally it's doing this and now it's doing this. Well, when I first, 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 first got started, uh, I was fortunate enough to be a part of a company where we could trade as much as we wanted uh, with no concern about how much money we would have. We didn't even know how much uh, leverage we had. We would just buy to our heart's content, we would sell to our heart's content, and the company basically just backed us. And so what happened is I started noticing that throughout the day, uh, keep in mind, you know, uh, the, the markets were a lot more volatile at this point. But I started noticing throughout the day, if you could find a stock that did that, 
however temporary, just over like a 10 minute time period, 15 minute time period, if the stock was just going, you know, over one minute, two minute, three minutes, so on, so on, so on, and then for five or 10 minutes, it just went parabolic or climactic to the downside, you could actually buy that. And I found that you could actually buy that and it, if you, you, would, you had to pick the bottom, that was the hard part. But you, on the next bounce, what would happen is it would bounce a little bit, it would fall, and then it would continue its bounce and flatten out. And so I figured out that when you buy this dip, if you could get your average cost somewhere in this range here, even though it might not be perfect, you could afford to sit through the first bounce. On the next drop, you could load up and buy as much as you wanted, really with no fear, and then take advantage of this move right here. And so I was just all about this. I studied this day and night. I set up scanners to find every single stock at any moment in time throughout the day, like a, a, a laser went off in, in the room that we were in. A laser went off and it'll go bow, 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 until I click the button to say, I, I see it, I'll go trade it. And uh, so I did all this, all kinds of research. I got started and uh, for two weeks straight, I made more money than I've ever made in my lifetime, all in one shot. It was two weeks. I have never seen that much money ever. I mean, at that point in my life, it was like, holy cow. I, I was like, I, I uncovered the holy grail. And so what happened is, uh, made so much money, our family went on a two week vacation and we just essentially didn't have a plan. We went wherever we wanted. We did Washington, uh, we did Vegas, we did, um, uh, uh, LA at the time, stayed at the Malibu Inn and everything, uh, New York, and we just kind of went wherever we felt like on the day, uh, and it was incredible. Well, I came back only two weeks later, and from then on, that had not worked. It, it wouldn't work. I gave back everything that I had made during that time. Why? Because I was so hyper-focused on one brief moment in time, I didn't realize that that was only temporary. Now there are times when this happens quite frequently uh, because of the stock market, but I didn't realize at the time that you needed a volatile stock market to then get this strategy. If you attempted to do this in a non-volatile stock market, uh, you lost. <laughs> so, you, so the traders that go on like YouTube and stuff and they're like, I kill it man and make money all the time, they have a story like this, I promise you they do. Um, and I'm, I've never been afraid to share like my losses in life. I've, I did another video on it as well. Uh, but I did that. I was, it was just two weeks of being like, oh my God, I'm going to get a private jet. This is incredible. And then two weeks of having a great time. And then the next two weeks, it wasn't even two weeks really, of uh, losing uh, all of it, everything that I made. I mean, every single penny. Uh, so that was how I kind of uh, experimented when I was much, much younger. And so when I tell you guys, when you guys tell me about trading strategies and stuff, I'm always a little skeptical because I want to do the research and dig in and I'm always going to mention uh, there are different markets, uh, so you want to uh, pay attention to that. Okay, you got time for one more? I actually have two more, but we'll do one more. Speaking of parabolic, May 6, 2010, everybody has one of those trading days they'll never forget. I consider myself very lucky for missing this day, um, but this is a bit of a mystery. and. I mean, we all pretty much know now what's happened, but check this out. May 6, 2010. Oh, I don't, I'm sorry, I can't see the uh, thing. Okay, cool. Uh, so on May 6, 2010, here's what happened. The stock market was moving along, doing its thing. And just like I showed you a second ago, the stock market fell in a matter of minutes like this, straight down. And then did a little of this and essentially recovered and went back to work. It was called the flash crash. Now, believe it or not, up until this point in time, um, nobody had thought, hey, what if the computers that are thinking for themselves think to get out of the way? And it was a huge discussion. Some people saw it coming, but most people didn't publicly talk about the fact that computers were running Wall Street uh, almost 100% at that time. There were no humans. Like the humans you see on TV were basically all just for show. And so nobody talked about what would happen if the computers freaked out. And on May 6, 2010, right in the middle of the day, uh, early morning, uh, the stock market started falling. And it wasn't, everybody was like, what happened, right? Did, did the world end? What's going on? And it turned out that what happened is, if you ever look at the price of a stock, you have a bid and you have an ask. And so the bid, Maybe that's $100. Someone's willing to pay $100 for the stock. 
and the ask may be $100.01. And, and it works just like a normal auction, right? So you wanna pay 100, they wanna sell 101. You wanna pay 100, they wanna sell 101. At some point, now there may be, you know, a thousand people here, and there may be a thousand people here. And so these people, over time, one of these people says, fine, I'll sell to you for 100. And then someone over here eventually goes, fine, I'll sell for 101. And that sort of math works itself out. The auction works itself out. And that's a normal fluid market. There are also people down here, 99.99, and there are people over here at 101, uh, sorry, 102 cents. And so there's a whole group of orders. And this goes on through this whole wave. There'll be a 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 94, and people place their orders there. My friend uh, on UTX is a great example. He places orders everywhere here and everywhere there. Well, most of these are actually computers. Very few are human beings. In fact, uh, when people place their orders, usually a computer takes over to get you the best price these days. You don't, most, most of you, especially if you're using Robinhood, uh, if you use Robinhood, you don't actually tell Robinhood what price to buy your stock. They just go make their best effort to get the best price for you. Look up the news. Somebody tweeted me the other day to tell me uh, what kind of challenges they have there. I also did a video on exactly how, they, uh, how it's free for you to trade there. Anyways, so what happened here is the world didn't end for that brief moment. Nothing was wrong. The president was still alive. There was no major assassinations. There was no earthquakes. There was no nothing. We scoured the world looking for news. Nothing. What happened was one of these computers over here said, I want to sell billions of dollars. And then these computers over here said, well, if you want to sell that much at that price, we don't want to pay that price. We want to pay this price. And then this computer said, well, fine, we want to sell at this price then. And then this guy here said, fine, well, then we want to sell here. And all of the buyers just got out of the way. They were all computers going, if you want to sell at this price, we see all that you want to sell there, we're going to back up. And then everything pushed down and they go, no, we're going to back up some more. And so the orders actually just moved out of the way. If you happen to have your order in there, you were filled and you were crushed. But what happened was the computers kept moving down. And somebody spotted that at some point and realized, hey, these computers are going to go to zero eventually. They didn't have a stopping point. And so they just kept pushing lower and lower and the bidding, the buyer side of the computers kept moving out of the way lower and lower and eventually disappeared. The system over here eventually said, well, if you're going to keep selling at these low prices, we don't even want to buy. Something must be wrong. So this side had it figured out to program in there, hey, if the price goes so low, expect something's wrong and just get out of the way. Well, what happens in a stock market if all the buyers disappear, but all the sellers still want to sell? They'll keep lowering their price more and more and more. And so eventually, all the buyers disappeared you know, from, the, from the algorithm side of things, and the sellers just kept lowering their price. And the stock market just fell little by little by little by little by little by little. But this was happening second by second. And so here's what happened. Uh, after this was sort of paused and stopped and everything, the markets recovered. All of a sudden, these systems down here, the bidders said, well, that's a ridiculous price for everything in the market we would like to buy. Unfortunately, it was way, 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 way down. I believe it was uh, close to a thousand points just on the Dow. And I'm not talking about over days. I'm talking about minutes. This happened so quickly. So if you were trying to sell your stock, if you saw that happening and you said, oh my God, I want out, there was nobody there to buy. You couldn't get out. So you were forced to ride through this wave. And what did we cover the other day? Using margin, the brokerage firms eventually saw that you were taking way too much risk. Your loss was too much. You hit the maintenance margin and the brokerage firms started saying, get him out of this position at any cost. But there were no buyers, right? Just a little, like a ghost town full of buyers. So when the brokerage firm said sell at any cost, they sold down here. You had to sell at the worst possible price. So it was stuck, right? It was like watching the world end briefly and there was nothing anybody could do to stop it because it was a computer system which would have required human intervention to stop the computer system, which eventually happened. So it was a huge mess. Now the mystery behind this is one of our friends at the time, the guy, one of the guys I worked with, um, for actually first, I wasn't even there. I was on the phone. I was hit to, I luckily took my mom to the airport. Otherwise, honestly, I don't think I would be here today. I would have lost everything all in one day and there's nothing anybody could have done about it. 
So uh, I happen to be going to the airport on the phone. Everybody's yelling and screaming about what's going on. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Anyways, I get back, it all settled down. I started calling people to say, what happened? You know, what did you do? How are you? And you know, what, what worked out? And we couldn't get a hold of one guy. We couldn't find him. And so I started calling everybody going, you know, was Tony even there? Did he, was he a part of this or was he lucky and was he gone as well? We don't know, we can't find him. So I called a few more people. I'm like, where's Tony? Did, did he make it? I mean, you know, is he in the corner crying or something? Cause he lost so much. And they said, we don't know, we can't find him. And actually we never found him. So we don't know what happened. There was eventually a funeral for him because there was a missing persons case filed. They went through the whole process. He just disappeared on that day. And so looking at his brokerage accounts, he unfortunately lost everything all in one day. And I'm not talking a thousand dollars. I'm, I'm talking many, 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 many millions of dollars. And he disappeared. To this day, we don't know where he's at. What happened? We don't even know if he's actually dead, but they, you know, you pass a certain amount of time and you're allowed to mark someone dead if they're missing. Uh, he literally disappeared. So on that day, I'm sure there are plenty of stories like that, but I, I, I don't even, I mean, now we kind of like sort of joke about it, uh, you know, that he might show up somewhere, but he's gone. And it was all because of that flash crash day. So pretty interesting there. Uh, I thought maybe I would uh, share that one with you. So you get to see a, a mystery. And if you happen to see him, uh, a guy just wandering the streets or something. We, we, we don't know. So um, anyways, uh, that's all I have for that one. And then uh, final one, just a, a fun one. I'll do a real quick fun one. I can't end on a bad note. Come on, guys. We're not going to end off like that. Mystery story. Uh, there's something called the Traders Expo. Uh, I think it's called the Money Show now, but one or the other. So what it is, basically a convention that you can go to. I've spoken at it many times. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere, uh, where... Uh, traders get together and they share ideas, they have conferences, the technology's there, you can look at platforms, just network with people, uh, free classes and all that stuff, uh, or investors, whatever it is, it's kind of like a conference for this sort of thing. And um, we used to go to this conference every year. The one I went to was in New York, there's some in Vegas, maybe Orlando now, I think. Um, and uh, what they would have trading competitions. And they wouldn't let us into the trading competition. So what they do is they, they set up a big stage and they go, okay, these five people are going to trade from 9.30 to 11. Whoever makes the most money gets labeled the, the, the champion. And uh, they wouldn't let us in. Uh, so it was mostly just because there were so many people that wanted to be in. It wasn't like they hated us or something. So they wouldn't let us in. And we we're like, hey, what are we going to do this year to really stand out? We want to trade. They won't let us trade. So we came up with the idea to have this booth. And we literally set up a booth where it was like this in the middle. And then there was another little booth here and one over here. And this booth had a massive TV on it. This booth had a massive TV on it, right? And then in the middle, we had a TV just right down the middle. Obscene amounts of money to build this booth. Anyways, so what we did is we said, this is gonna be a trading platform and this is gonna be a trading platform. And meanwhile, over here, well, it would have been over here, here's the stage where all those guys were trading and, and they wouldn't let us go be on the stage. So we were gonna split, split this screen right down the middle and show performance of each one of these. And so what we did is me and one of the other guys, we set up uh, uh, our platform here, our trading platform, he set up his, and me and him did a competition with each other. And we sounded a little alarm that a competition was gonna begin uh, every 30 minutes. We were gonna go head to head for 15 minutes and see who could make the most amount of money. And the company said, if you do it, you can use however much money you want. They did, we didn't even know at that point either how much we could use. And we just basically traded, it was a competition. And so I announced whatever I was gonna trade. I traded AKAM, that was what I traded all that day. It was in the news or something. And uh, I think he traded Apple, uh, Amazon, sorry, Amazon. And so uh, we traded against each other and it was kind of fun because we weren't that far apart. And after like the first two times that we did it, people started gathering around us rather than the stage. And so what we started doing was we had a little ball and we started throwing the ball at each other to sort of throw each other off and everything. And we ended up trading back and forth. We gave all the money to charity. I think at the end of the day, it was $22,000 between the two of us. We did it all day, by the way, it was exhausting. Uh, but we ended up making like a cool little thing out of it. And to this day, if you go to the Traders Expo or the Money Show, there's always somebody trying to do that there. That was us that started that. So I was always pretty proud of that because I don't think I've been, I have not been back since, uh, but that was kind of fun. I wish I had a more fun story to share with you. <laughs>
<laughs> but that's all I got. I couldn't end on a bad note. Um, Robinhood app is actively used in a scheme that involves the sale of user data, high frequency trader brokers on Wall Street. Um, that's a negative way to say it. Uh, <laughs> they, it's completely legal how Robinhood actually sells the order flow to a different company. Um, I actually sell the order flow, uh, well, Folio helps me, uh, but for our customers, we put it together and we sell the order flow to Citadel. That's how you guys get to trade for free here um, at, at, at Jazz and Folio. Um, the reason we do that is one, so you don't have the cost, of course, but with our orders, we actually specify that we have to have them at a certain price or no deal. Robinhood essentially just says, give us the best price, and they are left with the um, onus to justify the price that they gave you, which is not bad. We're, look, they're, we're not talking you're gonna miss the price by dollars, maybe a penny or two. Uh, so not, not a big deal at all on that one. It's actually very common. You wonder how you trade free um, the apps, the Acorns apps, the Stash app, they're all doing the same thing. We're all using the same company, by the way, to do it. Look up a company called Citadel. And if you like, you can actually see how much we send to them uh, as far as order flow and how much they pay us to get it done. It, it doesn't cover our costs, but it sure, sure helps offset it a little bit. Um, and that's exactly what Robinhood does. They're just a little more secretive about it uh, than other places. And it's all just because of competition. Thankfully, I'm never going to compete with them, so I don't mind telling you exactly how it goes. It's, uh, we did a video on it where I broke through, I went through each actual order to show you how it works. Um, GR, what tech stock do you recommend at this time? I am actually not allowed to say if I even did, but I will say it depends on how you, um, what, what are you doing with it? Right? Are you trying to invest for 20 years? Are you trying to buy something for next week? Do you want to buy China, China stocks because you think they've hit a bottom for some reason? So really it's, what's the goal? You know, I'm always goal oriented. If you're going to invest, you're going to open an account with us. The very first thing I want to do is figure out what your goal is. I can't help you if you don't have a goal. And uh, so with, your, with that tech stock thing, if you want to play a tech stock, uh, what's the goal? What do you, you want to play it today, by the end of the day, and wrap it up for the weekend, make some money? So I would start with that question. Um, and there you go. Yeah, you, I mean, and then as far as searching through tech stocks, I mean, there's no shortage of them in the news. Uh, oh, by the way, I saw, what are they doing now? Um, we have FANG stocks here in the States. I think they're doing BATS as the acronym for the Chinese tech stocks, uh, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, and Sina. So if you're following along, uh, that's going to creep up in the news today. <laughs> All right, look, I've talked enough today. Uh, I was hoping to make this one a short one. Just sharing some stories with you. Moral of the story, if you're going to be an active trader, you got to have a trading plan, however basic. Get it started, get it set up. Um, you're going to want to know what products you're going to trade. You're going to want to track your performance for sure. You're going to want to understand how leverage works. If you want to use it, if not, no big deal. Um, and then you want to have a great story one day. You will have a story. I promise you, you trade long enough. You will have a horror story and you will have a success story. It has happened to everyone I've taught over the years. And, uh, anyways, we'll be back to talk about the markets later, uh, five o'clock for the closing beat. Uh, interesting market started off strong and seems like no one wants to take any risk into the weekends uh, so we'll talk about that follow me on Twitter if you would I've been tweeting out things about the stock market and Disney oh my god you're lucky I'm still here today I should be at Disney <laughs> all right we'll talk to you guys later see it why should you choose jazz wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service our portfolios are managed by us not some faceless mutual fund manager our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours. Hey, wait! Before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new Fin Tips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. 